and welcome to the Undercover Jet Setter Exceptional Thanksgiving Dinner. We are going to show you how we've cooked this meal and we're going to show you how to pair wines with this meal as well. So we are so excited to be able to share. This is our first Thanksgiving show, and we're so excited to be able to share it with you guys. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. And we look forward to sharing this great meal and pairing a whole bunch of wines, undercover jet setter style, Thanksgiving. Cheers. Thank you so much. Mm. We say we have a Ferrari Carano, a Fumé Blanc, but we're going to get into all the wines afterwards because... Mm -hmm. We want to get into this meal that you and I have both cooked. And these Absolutely. these are kind of traditions that our families have had over the years uh, of coming together. And uh, so let's let's talk about what we have here. Absolutely. This, this and I can't wait to try this turkey that you've made with Coca-Cola. I mean, how crazy is that? And he's going to tell us all about it in just a second. And then we're going to see how you made it too. But I mean, it smells so good. I just can't wait to dive in and, and take a bite. So I'm actually going to do so that So we're right going to do it right now <laughs> and, uh, and enjoy it as well. And the other thing you did that I love is you used Herbe de Provence. Yep in there which is like i think everybody needs some herb de provence in their lives at all times for just the greatest seasoning ever mm. oh my god and you get it right on the mm. on the edge there mm. so this is phenomenal it's moist it's delicious and it's got this crazy different taste that i guess is from the coca-cola i think it's a combination of that and herbs de provence coming together mm. Um, well, I always use Herbe de Provence on mine, but this has like a really unique flavor. And one of the other things you're going to see, we have the gravy on here. Oh my God. The Coca-Cola actually gives you a different texture and a different look uh, to the gravy for the drippings that you use. Mm -hmm. so, it's darker. So it is different. And um, I discovered this about 15 years ago. I read about it. I tried it. And... My family went nuts over it, so I am not allowed to cook any other turkey but this. I said, let me experiment with something different. No, you are making this turkey. And, and I've, not, I've not had a failure on this turkey yet. It, it's, it's worked out good nearly every time. I will say, I think it cooks a little faster because of the Coca-Cola. Oh, because, okay. So, so you gotta check the, you got to check the meat a little bit more often than, than normally. And this seemed to cook a little bit quicker, and I've noticed that over the years, that it seems to, and I don't know if it's Coca-Cola, it does seem to... Uh, cook just a tad bit quicker so and you'll see it in our second block we're going to show you how we did the turkey as well well the taste is really interesting and it gives it a, another layer and another dynamic because i mean i love turkey but i'm not like a year-round give me some turkey fan i'll have a turkey sandwich but beyond mm -hmm. that i've really pretty much not using turkey maybe ground turkey and some tacos or something throughout the year but I'm not making a turkey, except on Thanksgiving, pretty much. And so the the thing with turkey is you really have to flavor it mm -hmm. with the seasonings, like the herbe de Provence, the salt, the pepper, whatever else you want to use in it. And then this, the Coca-Cola, really gives it another layer and another dimension that turkey doesn't normally have. Okay, let's get into some of the other stuff that you, that, that, that you made here. You, you made some fabulous potatoes here. And uh, now I drench them with the gravy. You didn't. No. Well, you know, I'm kind of a purist when it comes to potatoes mm. of any kind. Mm. I love potatoes and I love how potatoes taste mm. and however you cook them and whatever you cook them with, it's usually perfect. So mm. this is called those potatoes. Now they're called those potatoes because of the fact that when I first started this tradition, I found a recipe and like I do, like many of you probably do, I know you do, you, you change it up to suit your own flavor tastes and your family's flavor tastes. And so that's kind of what I did with this. So over the years, I kind of developed and it became this thing. And and because we really only had it at Thanksgiving or Christmas time, or sometimes I'd make it on people's birthdays if this was one of their favorite dishes, it became known as those potatoes because it was like, well, Susan, you're going to make those potatoes. So that's why we call it those potatoes. And so the thing of it is, though, now if I don't make these potatoes at Thanksgiving or Christmas time, as you said, people are nuts. Yeah. They're like, what? Has has anarchy, you know, zombies are walking the earth? What has happened? Because they're obsessed with those potatoes. They're like addictive. But 
you can, you have to limit yourself to them because they are like about, you know, this is probably like 2,500,000 calories right here in one teaspoon. Give or take. So, you know, you kind of, you can't have them every day, but you know, they are delicious and it's nice to splurge and you know, it's when you splurge, you got to go big or go home. And I you'll say. see uh, in the third block, you'll see mm -hmm. how Susan made them, um, but they are, they're creamy. Uh, I do get the sour cream. I get the cream cheese in there. Mm -hmm. I certainly get the butter because you don't skimp on butter. Uh, you but, shouldn't skimp on butter. But the, Especially but, if you're using grass-fed butter. It's very good for you. And then the scallions. The mm -hmm. scallions added in there are great. So kind of like the turkey that if you don't do something with turkey, it's just kind of, eh, it's kind of turkey. The same thing with potatoes. If you do potatoes the right way, then they become luxury. And that is perfect. In fact, that is really perfect with... With the uh, with the turkey, I think it's a great yeah. combo. And you know the thing I love about it is, and I think you're the same way. We we like our potatoes a little bit more on the chunky, yeah. rustic side, mm -hmm. so that makes it even easier to do these. And they make a head, so we make a head a day, and it makes them taste even better. So mm -hmm. it's that's the great part about it too. Makes it easy for for when you're uh, the day of Thanksgiving, you're just going to throw them in the oven. All right, so let's go to your uh, broccolini here mm. that you came up with, and this is actually really interesting for me because I've I've not had a cold vegetable. You know, usually you're going to have, on Thanksgiving, normally you're going to have, uh -huh. you know, turnips or sweet potatoes or something like that. This is really interesting to try something different here. And it's a cool way of how you, how you made it as well. Yeah, well, it's very easy. And I actually mm. have to say, this tradition kind of came mm. from my mother-in-law who was Italian, she's passed away since, but we continue it on. And um, this is something that's very Italian. So. It's broccolini rather than regular broccoli. You could make it with regular bro broccoli, but the broccolini is just a little more elegant. I find at the end of the day, it's a little sweetier and nuttier to, to kind of have with these flavors. And it's so easy to make. You're gonna see how we did it in just a second. But what I love about it is, not only does it bring some healthy nutrition to your Thanksgiving table along with everything else, but it's not heavy. And so you've got all this heavy stuff and it brings this freshness and this lightness and it's got lemon in it and things like that. So it really gives that other pop of flavor that usually is not really there for other traditional Thanksgiving foods. So that's kind of what I love about it. I think the citrus is, is what really makes it stand out. Mm -hmm. And then you have the garlic in it, which really kind of, you know, goes up nicely against the potatoes and, and the turkey as well. So you've got you've got a totally different taste coming in here. Yeah, no, I love it. I mean, my Thanksgiving treat is after everybody's left, it's like midnight and I'm finished cleaning up. I get myself some broccolini <laughs> and a bowl of those potatoes, and that's what I have as a midnight snack oh, with nice. another glass of wine. <laughs> very nice, very nice. All right, let's get into mm. the stuffing here because this is oh, this yeah. is a stuffing that I normally make, but um, I make it really simple at home. Because family members just don't like anything a little off the beaten path. I did a little off the beaten path because you were going to be here. So well, you went a little undercover jet setter style with well, it. Well, I did. Um, <laughs> oh my god, mm. it's so delicious. Mm. I mean, it's flavorful. Mm. It's savory. It's sweet. It's got like a great um, underlying, you know, I guess from the herb de Provence that underlying just holiday. Mm flavor that you you expect and you always want it's kind of that thanksgiving feel mm -hmm. that you had or you remembered as a kid mm -hmm. and I, I think some of it is and a lot of you don't like this and you'll, you'll see this when we show you the uh, when we show you how we made the dressing um, mm. we used the gizzards of, of the of the turkey and to me because it's like liver and it's like mm -hmm. a pate and to also me, known as sweet breads a delicacy sweet breads, in many restaurants and 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 for me, that just, it, 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 cause you got the bread, you have the onion and you do have kind of the sweetness, especially because some of the drippings from the Coca-Cola in there. Mm -hmm. And when you have that, the sweet bread in there, it just gives it that other oomph. So you got a lot more things going on. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. It's delicious. I mean, it's moist and, and you know, you'll see when you see how he made it, it's so um, full of flavor, but it's also full of liquid and moisture and moistness. Because there's one thing everybody hates, it's dry stuffing. This is like drenched with liquid and flavor and broth and butter and who knows, whatever else is in there. But it's just delicious. Just delicious. I love it. All right. So let's come back and we will show you 
how we made all this. And then later in the show, we're going to show you how to pair wines and what wines would go really good with this. And we got like five of them that we can try to, uh, to let you know. So uh, stick around and happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Looking for great deals on travel? Well, check out the Undercover Jet Setter Travel Club. It costs you nothing to join. Just go to jetsetterdeals.com. And welcome back, everybody. We're here enjoying our Thanksgiving meal that, uh, that we cooked up for you. That's right. I'm sorry. I was chewing. I'm too busy eating. I forgot we're doing, we're doing a show. <laughs> Well, go ahead, tell them what we're gonna do next. So next, we have the exciting extravaganza mm -hmm. of how did we make this turkey and make it so moist and have all these different layers of flavors. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna see everything that we did to make it. And then you're gonna see how we made the gravy as well as the stuffing, which is phenomenal. So super stuffing to Enjoy. the rescue. Cheers. Enjoy. And come back so we can <laughs> tell you how good it is. <laughs> So here's how to cook this exceptional undercover jet setter turkey. You can use a frozen turkey, but we suggest one that is fresh. There is a difference. Now we did a dry brine on the bird a day before. We mixed kosher salt, malabar pepper, and herbe de Provence. Now make sure the bird is dry, then gently separate the skin from the meat and start rubbing. The majority of the rub should go on the breasts. You also want to put some in the cavity. The salt loosens up the muscle fibers in the bird, so it will allow more moisture into the meat. Now let it sit in the fridge for about 24 to 48 hours. Clean off the excess brine and then make sure the bird is dry. First thing is to make the stuffing. Keep it simple. Chop up celery and onions. If you have an older crowd, you may want to cut them up a bit smaller. Next, cook them in olive oil. I add some garlic powder, onion powder, and as always, herbs de Provence. You can also take the gizzards and cook them in water or turkey stock and use that juice with the gizzards in the dressing for a more pungent taste. Now gear it toward your crowd. Some folks are kind of turned off by gizzards. Let it cook down, then add the turkey stock. You can use chicken stock too. Now you want it to be nice and juicy since it will be absorbed by the bread. Rip the bread into pieces. It's best to do it the night before so the bread is dried out and crusty. Put the bread in a bowl and then dump the cooked celery and onions onto the bread and mix. Let it sit for a while. You won't stuff the bird right away. Let it cook for about a half an hour at least before stuffing. Okay, now let's get the bird ready. First, melt the butter with the Herbe de Provence and then put them in a syringe and start injecting into the breasts. This will help the white meat stay moist. Next, pour the butter and rub it in. Be careful not to rip the skin since we have injection spots already. Cover the legs and the wings, especially the tips, with foil since they tend to dry or burn easily. Next, and here's the secret. Take a couple of cans of regular Coca-Cola, pour it over the top of the bird. Now, this is the only time I am a fan of these sodas. Then sprinkle Herbs de Provence on the skin and pop it in to a preheated 350 degree oven. Check the cooking time based on the bird's size. This one is 12 pounds, so about three and a half hours. Estimate about 20 minutes per pound. Now we add the stuffing about an hour into the cooking to make sure there is no bacteria. Take the rest of the stuffing and wrap it in silver foil and cook in the oven. Now I tend to be an obsessive baster, but with the butter injections you might not have to do that. I'd watch and baste every half hour at least. Just remember that constant opening of the oven could slow down the cooking process. Now, to know if the bird is ready, use a food thermometer. The meat must be at at least 165 degrees. When ready, take the bird out and let it sit for about 30 minutes. Notice how the Coca-Cola gives the bird a different glow. The Coke also creates a great juice to use in a gravy. Remove the dressing first and then get it into a bowl to stay hot. When you start carving, go to the dark meat first, then do the white meat, which has a tendency to dry out. Pour the drippings into a pan. We added coconut flour and a little chicken bouillon. Stir and make your gravy. With the herbs de Provence, the butter, and the coke, it should be quite tasty. But give it a try first to see if it needs more spice. 
that herb de Provence and the butter and the Coke, just like you said, those I think are the three key ingredients to making that gravy as well as the whole meal, the stuffing, the turkey. It all kind of comes together, different flavors, but there's this continuous through line of beautiful ingredients and that's them. Even if I do say so myself. Yes, of what course. What you said for me. Very nice job, by the way. <laughs> when we come back though, we're going to show you how Susan made the potatoes and the broccolini, so stick around. Those potatoes. Those Not potatoes. Not just any potatoes. Not just anyone. Those, Those potatoes. potatoes. <laughs> Looking for great deals on travel? Well, check out the Undercover Jet Setter Travel Club. It costs you nothing to join. Just go to jetsetterdeals.com. Sharing Thanksgiving with you, and now we're going to get into all the side dishes. And one of them is those potatoes, which are really Susan's potatoes that she made, as well as the broccolini. So take a look and see how she made them. Those potatoes are very easy to make, and the great thing is you can make them the day ahead, and they taste even better. Now, we use gold potatoes, but you can use red potatoes as well. We like to leave the skins on. First, you'll quarter the potatoes and cut off any bits that you don't want in there. Then, put the potatoes on to simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes. Make sure to add a good amount of salt to the water. The potatoes are done when they are soft in the center when pricked with a fork. While the potatoes are cooking, bring the sour cream, cream cheese, and heavy cream to room temperature in the bowl that you'll be using. Next, you'll want to chop up your green onions. When the potatoes are ready, scoop them into the bowl. Save some potato water in case you want to use it to add to the potatoes later. Combine the potatoes, cream cheese, sour cream, and heavy cream and blend until you reach the consistency you want. We like the potatoes to remain on the chunky side. Then add another good amount of salt and also pepper to taste. Add more cream if you like. This will moisten the potatoes even more and is especially good if you are making these the day before. Lastly, fold in your green onions. And if you are making this the day ahead, here is where you pop the potatoes into the fridge to sit overnight. Next, take the potatoes out of the fridge to come to room temperature a few hours before they are ready to bake. Scoop the potatoes into an oven-safe dish and layer with chunks of butter. Also put some butter chunks on the top. Cover the potatoes with foil and put them into a 350 degree oven to bake for about 45 minutes. Let the potatoes rest for about 15 minutes before transferring into a pretty serving bowl. Then garnish with more green onions or chives on the top and serve. Okay, now the broccolini dish is very easy to make as well. Boil the broccolinis for just a couple of minutes and then plunge them into a bowl filled with cold water and ice. This is called blanching. It stops the cooking process and keeps the broccolinis a nice bright green color. Plus, the broccolinis stay al dente this way too. Now cut up the lemons in half and chop up the garlic into fine bits. Layer the broccolinis onto your serving platter and drizzle with a really good extra virgin olive oil. Then sprinkle the garlic throughout the broccolinis and squeeze the lemons all over the top. Last, add a good amount of pepper and salt to taste. Serve cold or at room temperature. So welcome back. You know, the lemon and the brightness in that broccolini really freshens up your whole Thanksgiving meal. And those potatoes, if you've never tried them, they are phenomenal. You've got to try them at least once. I love how they kind of play off each other. Yeah. Really well done. Okay, let's pair some wines with this meal. Stick around. Looking for great deals on travel? Check out the Undercover Jet Setter Travel Club. It costs you nothing to join. Just go to jetsetterdeals.com. Let's talk about the wines now because pairing wines with Thanksgiving, it's really not that difficult. I mean, there's, there's a lot out there, but mm -hmm. you, you've, you've you got to find the right one and it might be for the right budget too. Exactly. Yeah. No. And so we've we've put together a bunch of options for you, and and they're white. We also have a red, um, and they're they're full range of budget. Nothing too expensive, but from from I would say anywhere from six ninety nine to about fifteen ninety nine. No, just kicking it off with this Ferrari Corano Fumé Blanc. 
this is such an exceptional Thanksgiving wine. If you have a higher end budget, I would say this is around the $15 price range. Um, it's phenomenal with all the foods though. So everything we've had here, um, the turkey, the broccolini, those potatoes, the stuffing, it just pairs perfectly with every single thing. Because I used a lot of the herbs to provide. Talk about how that works really well with the Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, it works great with a Sauvignon Blanc for, for two reasons. The Fumé Blanc that Ferrari Grano does is done in the French style. That's why they call it Fumé Blanc. So done in the French style in Herbe de Provence, you're pairing two things from the same region, which is always a great thing to do. Now, this is very crisp. It's very herby, yeah. and, and it's got great, it's creamy, but it's not Chardonnay creamy. It's creamy as in it just is smooth and well-rounded and so as you're pairing it with something that's heavy like the turkey it kind of just takes it and it, it creates this whole other flavor combination in your mouth yeah. that is just so beautiful and it's got you know I would say like Meyer lemon it definitely in this wine comes out and so that not only it complements the potatoes and the stuffing it brings this light zestiness to them almost kind of like the lemon does on the broccolini adds to the dish in the same way all right the next one is Columbia crest and this is this has always been one of our favorites we, we've actually done a number of segments on them on, on different shows and this is I hate to say it's a cheap wine but it's a great tasting cheap wine Oh yeah, and if you've got a crowd over, this is like my top recommendation for the longest time. If you're having a big crowd of people, serve this. Yeah. Nobody is going to know that you spent between $6.99 and $8.99 a bottle for it because it's a great Chardonnay. They do it right. It's super balanced. It's buttery and a little bit of oak, but not over the top. And it's got the citrus kick that you love. Um, but it's just a great Chardonnay that's just really done right. And it goes so well with the Thanksgiving food because again you're pairing something that's heavy in this case the buttery oak kind of cuts through the turkey and the heaviness of the of the Thanksgiving food which is you know stuffing potatoes all that kind of thing and then as far as the broccolini goes it goes great with that too yeah. because it balances out the citrus and the lemon and the acid over there so it's really a great wine it, you know if you're serving other things like sweet potato pie it's phenomenal with that yeah. yes all right, the next one is a Black Mountain Chardonnay. And now we're, we're getting into the wines that are specific to, to some certain stores that you and I actually go to quite a bit. Exactly, yes. So those last two recommendations we gave you, you can pretty much find those anywhere, anytime. They're available almost everywhere. This one is if you're near Trader Joe's. So Trader Joe's has this great uh, deal with Black Mountain Vineyards who come from Sonoma and Napa. So they produce this great Chardonnay. They've got other wines too there at Trader Joe's, but this Chardonnay is a great pairing with Thanksgiving food. And we also love it because it's $6.99 at Trader Joe's. You can't go wrong there. I mean, it's, it's another wine where you're gonna serve it to your guests and they're gonna go, yeah. This is phenomenal. We can't believe you spent so much on Thanksgiving for us. Thank you so much, you know, cause, so they're gonna love it. And you know, it's got the apple and the and the fruit, the mm -hmm. pineapple, but it's also got the buttery and the oak and you know, a little more touch of vanilla, I would say, than a Columbia Crest, but it's just, mm -hmm. it's so delicious. Okay, so the fourth wine is from Costco. It's the Kirkland Sonoma County. And just to be fair, we did our top five Chardonnays, and I had this in my top five. Mm -hmm. Here again, we're giving you another option that if you have a Costco near you, again, $6.99. You cannot go wrong with this. And it's got a very um, layered composition to it. So I think that's the other piece to it and the other component that it's, it's, it's half mm -hmm. buttery oaky and the other half is like fruits, apples, I would say, you know, pineapple. It's got a touch of orange citrus too. And here's the red. It is the Pinot Noir from Carneros. This is also Kirkland or a Costco brand. It's a freaking phenomenal Pinot Noir. Again, it's mid-range. I, I think it's about $9.99. And mm -hmm. for that price, this is a phenomenal wine. Now, try it with something and, and let me know what you think as far as well, flavor goes. Here's what's interesting. In the I had Thanksgiving it, meal. I, I had it with the dark meat and the white meat. Um, the dark meat, absolutely phenomenal with the Pinot Noir. It, but I just had it with the white meat. And I think because of the Herbe de Provence, it brings out the... 
it actually brings out a meatier flavor if you can think about that concept okay. a meatier flavor yeah. in the white meat of the turkey so enjoy everybody while you have them and live large and live long happy thanksgiving here's to undercover jet setter and here's to you guys thank you hey you didn't cry this time that's good we have a new healthy sangria for you that is light tasty and refreshing it is the jet setter a1c apple sangria here is all you need cut up two or three apples we slice them into long thin wedges so they'll be easy to grab from your glass to munch on. Now drop them in a glass pitcher so it fills about one third of the pitcher. Our recipe here will give you six servings. Next, pour in six ounces of apple whiskey. We chose Evan Williams, but there are other good quality whiskeys that you can use. Now add in the secret healthy ingredient, the A1C apple flavored tea. Use two 12 ounce cans. We've shown you other cocktails that we've created with the other A1C flavors. Like the others, the apple flavored tea is part of the first scientifically designed diabetic drinks in the history of the world. And it also had hundreds of scientific and medical studies to show how it helps folks who are overweight, obese, and diabetic. Oh, and also, it's great tasting. Once you have this mixed, you can leave the pitcher in the fridge to chill for a while. But if you can't wait, pour it into a glass with ice, but not to the top. We've got one more thing. That's right. Now add two ounces of Prosecco. Now we chose the Costco brand that is light, dry, and slightly sweet. Now enjoy. This is light and refreshing. It's a great brunch late afternoon or pre-dinner drink. Looking for great deals on travel? Check out the Undercover Jet Setter Travel Club. It costs you nothing to join. Just go to jetsetterdeals.com. The Jet Setter Apple Spice Martini is the perfect melting pot of spirits for any celebration. So grab your cocktail shaker and fill it up with ice. Now we pour three different rums. First, an ounce of dark rum. Next, an ounce of gold rum. Then finish the trifecta with an ounce of spiced rum. Now you'll also notice everything is in one ounce measures here. Now we add a little citrus. We use an ounce of Grangala, an orange liqueur, with a touch of brandy. Then we add an ounce of apple cider. You can get regular or spiced. Then to give it a little ginger taste, we add an ounce of ginger beer. Give it a good mix, but don't pour yet. Take a half teaspoon of cinnamon and a half teaspoon of sugar and mix it onto a plate. Take a slice of orange and moisten the rim of your glass. Now dip it into the sugar cinnamon mix to get that perfect rim taste. Now pour. Jet Setter Apple Spice Martini has a touch of New England and the Caribbean. And you can try it year round, but probably best for fall, winter, and early spring. Cheers.